Mm. What Mr. is Fernandez? <laughs> what up? What is going on? How you doing, okay, bud? I'm not doing too badly. How about yourself, buddy? You know what? I tell you, this, uh, just to let the audience know, um, you know, <laughs> we're, we're prepared for this like 10 minutes before we get on board. Uh, and then we have a countdown and then we're, you know, um, we're silent for this whole countdown. So it really feels like we're about to host a show. I don't know if you get that feeling, but, you know, we have that, that uh, one minute of silence before we go on board. And uh, it, it just brings me back to, uh, you know, to work. So I appreciate this. Oh, you mean completely unprepared? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly what it feels like <laughs> to me, too. Perfect. <laughs> and, and no paycheck at the end. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Just like work. All right. I now love I'm the gonna, reality. Uh, excuse me whilst I – can you start uh, and get people uh, warmed yeah, up whilst I, I just take care of some technical, technical difficulties? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. First and foremost, thank you, everybody, for uh, joining in on the uh, Mark and Rose show. This is, uh, you know, something that we've been wanting to get off the ground. And it just took a pandemic for us to get started. So uh, here we are. But uh, shout out, what a good life, Phil Rods. So good to see you guys again. We appreciate the love. Uh, Andrew or Warakai Zakaloni. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. <laughs> High tech, Look, right? You know. I don't want to reveal that uh, this is a big budgeted show, but uh, you know, <laughs> just to make yabang, that that's that's yeah. where all the money goes in this production. Exactly. So if you, if you <laughs> oh, should, maybe we shouldn't be revealing our secrets. Oh uh, yeah, oh yeah, we we have a big launch of that. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's fine. Nobody's watching anyway. No one's paying attention. Could oh you... hey, Tim's watching. Tim, What's yeah. Up, Tim? Hey, oh. hey. hi, Timmy. Welcome. Tim Tim oh. himself has been getting on the uh, podcasting IG live, uh, Facebook live uh, uh, train, and he's doing fantastic. Oh, he's, he does fantastic at everything he does. That yes, guy he is does. Such an, over, such an overachiever. Yeah, um, speaking, definitely. Speaking of uh, overachievers, oh, uh, Sparky880 is here as well. We've got uh, oh. Nikki Huang. Yeah, speaking of overachievers, Nikki Wong. Um, Hi, Nikki. Uh, and Melissa. Wow, there's so many people. Um, but yeah, speaking of uh, overachieving and, and great things, uh, let's talk about some highs and lows. What have your highs and lows been for uh, this past week? Oh, you know what? Highs and lows. You know, there's so many. But uh, I, I just realized I got my credit card bill today. Oh, that's the And low. I looked at it. And then I laughed at it, and I was like, I just threw it. I just threw it away. I mean, I threw it down. I usually I would never do that in in normal times, but it's so nice to look at a bill and laugh at it. And and uh, you know, unfortunately, I uh, I have some programs with my banking and all that. I was able to let some payments slide, but uh, but it but when I thought of my lows, of course, the low was how am I going to pay for my bills? So in one fell swoop, I got my high and my low all at the same time. Wait, wait, wait. So, so, so getting the, the credit card bill, was that a high or a low? Was it a high the, bill that caused it to be a low or was it a low <laughs> it bill a, that caused it, was, it to be a high? <laughs> it was a low moment when I received it. It was a high moment when I realized I don't need to pay this for another month. And it went back to a low moment when I realized, oh, well, how are you going to pay for it when you don't have any work? So... No, oh. okay, yeah. yeah. So, so you got the you got the whole gamut. Not bad. I did. It was a roller coaster ride of emotions at uh, three p.m. today. So, how about you, man? What's <laughs> what's been your highs and lows this week? Uh, my highs and lows this week. Um, well, the highs have definitely been uh, all the meetings we've been having regarding uh, with our with our team actually regarding this show and the plans that they've they've got for us. We wish we could reveal them to you, everyone, but uh, yeah, it, it's pretty awesome. Um, we do want want to remind everyone, please. Uh, go out there, tell your friends if you're enjoying this. Uh, you can actually pin this on your IG stories now. Let people know that you're watching. Um, we actually want to get more people on board to watch the show so that we can then expand and make it even bigger and better for all of you guys. Um, so big shout out to our EPX team um, uh, for all of their hard work. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, yeah. Please get other people to come and follow the Mark and Rove uh, Instagram account. When we say big, you know, expand the show. It's um, we're talking dancing, 
we're talking uh, fireworks, uh, pyrotechnics, uh, blue screen, green screen, all that. Yeah. I mean, we're just giving you a taste of the potential by showing you our uh, logo here. Um, yes. Truly an expensive piece of production. Yes. So, Very. Uh, yeah, a lot to look forward to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're so high tech. We might yes. actually be the first TV show that goes backwards. We're going to wind up going to radio. They're like, you know what? We don't need to see them. Okay, we'll we'll just at least listen to them. So, <laughs> well, can can we do a show via like uh, smoke signals or something? Is that a thing? Yeah, you know what? We'd probably find a way to burn our studio down. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> actually us. probably true. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, well, in line with uh, going that far backwards in technology, how about uh, we talk about uh, technology? Yes, um, absolutely. Uh, oh, Nikki's going. Bye, Nikki. Um, hey. Yeah, so how is technology helping us uh, or not during this current pandemic? Uh, I mean, right now, it's, it's a great way. I mean, we're using technology at the moment to uh, connect with each other and with everyone that happens to be watching. But uh, what are some of the other ways that tech is helping us out? You know, ones that, you know, are a little unusual. Well, I like the fact that you brought up unusual because, of course, you have the below the line type of technology that uh, is just there and, and we're so used to it. I mean, it, well, it's funny that the thermometer of all the technology things that come to mind, that, that is the one that is the most useful at this moment you know if you can yeah. if you just realize it the, the simple thermometer that we thought was so uh you know just the simplest piece of technology it's actually one that is saving our lives right now and we all want our own thermometer you know what i'm saying do you um, have your own thermometer no i don't there is just like kettlebells there is a worldwide shortage of thermometers <laughs> but uh, i just uh, i i was able to get one at uh watson's a few weeks ago Oh, good, um, because I had one, but the, the battery had mm. just corroded to nothing. Um, okay. So I was actually looking for the old school uh, So this is your second Mercury. thermometer, Mark. So this is my, th yeah, this is my second thermometer. Uh, wow. Don't ask me. <laughs> well, last time you asked to borrow it, I didn't want I, I was afraid to put it in my mouth after I got it back. I don't know where you've been using it. <laughs> oh, was that an oral thermometer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> uh, not anymore, it's not. <laughs> It was for the turkey. It's a turkey baster. I used it for uh -huh. the turkey, I swear. You turkey. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, let's, um, well, talking about some of, some of the, uh, the tech uh, that is being used at the moment, um, did you see that video of the, um, the drone walking the dog? Yes, yes, that was pretty dope. We actually posted it up. I didn't know that, uh, yeah, is that legal? <laughs> <laughs> I, how, yeah, how, I, I don't see why not. How far can you walk your dog? I don't own a drone. Um, you having owned 19 of them. <laughs> how far is the radius that you can walk the dog? Well, the battery is one that will run out fastest. Um, uh, the drone in that particular video was uh, one of the DJI Phantom series. So okay. oh, you're probably looking at a max time of maybe... 20 somewhere between 25 to 30 minutes um is, is that good enough time for a dog to well you see that's, himself that's, and do his duties that's where that's where i need some help because i don't own a dog um i own cats mm. okay. uh, but yeah i imagine i imagine if uh your dog is well behaved enough then uh yeah you can you know walk him around the block in uh in 20 minutes and hopefully he'll do his business uh, what yeah. would be troubling is if he's doing his business, he's having a hard time, and then your drone runs out of battery. Because uh, you also don't <laughs> yeah. want to, like, you know, try and yank yank the chain as he's halfway through, and he, you know, pinch you right. off the loaf. Right, that um, that is true. Well, that would be. Uh, you you also don't want to get a drone that's too powerful because if you miscalculate something, you could actually be choking the dog. I mean, would it there be enough thrust to kind of, you know, you don't want that. Uh, you'd, you'd need a very, very powerful drone. Uh, yeah. Be, um, drones like of that size don't have a huge payload weight. Um, mm, oh, okay. Christar, Christar made a very good point. Christar, you are absolutely correct. Who picks up the poop? Um, yes. You know That's what? You're one. right. That, that is reason enough not to use a drone to walk your dog. 
Okay. Well, there you go. Although Thank no you one should be walking, no, no one should be walking in the streets to step in it. But still, <laughs> and it is and biodegradable. It'll, it'll, it'll break down eventually. And uh, and they're all yeah. disinfecting their shoes when they get home anyway. <laughs> Sorry. No, but that was, that uh, does make sense. Poop yeah. drone number two. Yes, There's that's two. that's. Why thanks, not? <laughs> thanks, Sparky. <laughs> um, okay, how about uh, okay LGUs apparently. Uh, mm -hmm. They're using CCTVs uh, to track social distancing. Uh, do you think that's a, a useful use of, uh, of technology? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's exactly what the CCTV was meant to do. It wasn't meant to do that specific uh, mm -hmm. task, but it's a task that just opened, it up, opened itself up. And why not, you know? Um, mm. I want to take this a, little, a step further. Um, we, of course, in our country, due to technology issues, we just have the CCTV. That's as good as we can get. But yeah. in Singapore, they have a new tracking system that is phenomenal. Uh, we both discussed this. And uh, yes. it's, it's simply, uh, I think it's, it's called the Trace Together app. Yes. And um, it just works via Bluetooth if you are uh, within six feet of somebody. Uh, there's an exchange of uh, information, and that's it. It logs it onto your phone. Uh, it doesn't say where you are. Um, it just logs on every single person you contacted. And uh, I think that's fantastic in times like yep. this. It is controversial because of the fact that people are saying hey, it's an invasion of privacy. What's your take on, on uh, the Trace app or anything similar to that? Well, it's, it's funny you should mention that because, yeah, they did roll it out in Singapore, but now they've rolled it out in Australia as well. I believe it's That's the right. same app. Um, mm -hmm. And my mother actually asked uh, my brother and I, if, you know, should I download this or not or what? And I was like, yeah, I mean, there's always going to be concerns about privacy issues and everything else. And my brother made a very good point. Um, uh, he said, you know what? Uh, our privacy is pretty much shot already anyway. If, we, if you have social yeah. media... You're already screwed. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> they That's know right. where you live. They know everything about you. But That's um, right. this, this app apparently does not ask for your name. It doesn't ask for your address. But it does, uh, yeah, track um, where people are. And if you have been within uh, close to, um, like, within a couple of meters distance of someone that does test positive for COVID later on, it sends you an alert. Um, Fantastic. So that you know. And so one of the bonuses is you can actually show people your app and say, look, I haven't come in contact with anyone uh, that's been confirmed to have the virus. So I'm actually pretty safe. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I think, going to be, it may be part of the new normal until we get things under control. I wouldn't be surprised if I see a lot more countries roll this out. Uh, yeah, definitely. I don't yeah. see why, why not. It's do you have to yeah. pay for it? No, no, no. It's free. It, I, the it's government free. is, and you don't have to join. Uh, the, the government said it's voluntary. They were hoping to get, uh, uh, like, I think, 40% of the population. But, uh, yeah, right. they, got a bunch, right. they got a bunch of people downloading it already. Now, Aria Herrera says China started using QR codes to see if you've recently gone to the doctor. Huh. Interesting. Mm. China's, yeah. Okay. Um, it, yeah. it would work in countries like China, like Singapore, because they have mm. a society that really listens to their government. There is not a lot of defiance. I mean, not as much as like our country, for instance, or the Americas. Um, you know, you're going to get people who are a little more on the left and are like, no, this is an invasion of my privacy or you know, whatever right. their beliefs yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. So, um yeah, Big Brother's watching us. I don't want to do it. So it's great that these countries like Singapore and China, they can mobilize a lot faster because they're, yeah, they have a very uh, obedient, I guess, is that the word? Society. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it's part of the, the culture. Um, well, then let's move on to something a little bit more exciting in regards to uh, COVID yeah. and technology. Um, <laughs> so apparently, uh, apparently the sale of vibrators has shot through the roof worldwide. Um, uh, so that, and also, uh, I've heard, or I haven't done much research on it, but apparently there has been a rise in internet connected toys. Now, I don't know if that means that, you know, your, uh, uh, yeah, your, your vibrator or your, um, uh, that the, the male vibrator, 
um, is connected <laughs> to an to the internet so that like if you're watching porn, does it then react accordingly? I I don't know. Does any is anyone out there know? Can you help us out? Did you just make that up? That sounds insane. That that sounds like a technology that would exist. And uh, I think uh, yeah. Does that have a name? I, that's has to that has to exist. Uh, but I yeah, I, a, I can. Yeah, sorry, sorry. No, no, go, go, go. No, I can see why um, sales of sex toys have gone up. You know, um, yeah. It's and not just for the singles. Uh, sales of sex toys for couples has also gone mm. up. You know, um, whatever those, whatever those might be, couple rings. I believe if that's one thing, I don't know what that looks like. Google it and let us know. But uh, couple I, I, rings. Yeah. That's the first thing that came up. We're reading the same articles, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not reading but, uh, the articles. I'm just looking at the pictures. <laughs> but speaking of articles, then, um, the top selling vibrators are the Satisfier Pro 2, the G Spot great vibrator. Name. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that is a great name. I wonder how the Pro 1 was and what were the improvements. Okay. Uh, the Adam and Eve's G Spot vibrator and then the Adam and Eve's Rabbit vibrator. This is according to Adam and Eve, the largest. Um, uh, sex toys online retailer. Interesting. Okay, um, so the rabbits so, dropped to third. <laughs> I know. The, I, yeah, the rabbit. I mean, back in our day, was probably the most well known. Um, now, yeah. Jill Decker has a very good point. Some apps have uh, that can be controlled by the owner's partner. So apparently, and I know our production team has told us as well. So the girlfriend or the wife or whatever wears a vibrator, and it's app controlled but it can be controlled by her partner's app from afar. So if you're in a different country, but you're on the app that's connected to your partner's vibrator, <clears throat> you can be like, rear, rear, rear. Got it. Got it. <clears throat> and then the fingering action of your partner would be almost simultaneously, you know, rhythmic. And you, if yours is your longtime partner, you can kind of literally be whatever, with her, with the same feeling, almost electronically, is that it? That's insane. I, I guess, yeah, they can control the speed and, and everything. Um, and where know, does the I drone actually... on a dog come in? <laughs> uh, <laughs> to your bedroom, whenever it wants. Um, but you know how, uh, you know how uh, a lot of tech, like for instance, Blu-rays and, uh, and uh, HD, uh, okay. We're kind of competing. Same with uh, Sony, like Betamax and VHS way back in the day. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> do you think that uh, porn being the mother of invention, that we'll be seeing a lot of new innovations uh, in sex toys during quarantine? Are you asking me or are you I'm asking, asking the you. audience? <laughs> I'm asking both. <laughs> Oh, man. You know what? I don't know if it's new sex toys that will come uh, into into the atmosphere, uh, but um, <laughs> I know new positions and definitely new places in the house. You know what I'm saying? You're in the house. You're, you're, it's just you and your, your partner. It's like, okay, well, we don't need to do it in the bed for the 800th time. Let's, you know, I mean, can we try the... The, the laundry room with a laundry bowl with, with a dryer on, you know, maybe that or, or in, in the library, you know. The vibration um, of the dryer is incredible. So I've, <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> as research uh, tells us. Um, as research tells us. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Wait, let me see where we are. But, but people will get inventive. That's for sure. No, absolutely. Uh, I just want to mention one more thing. <clears throat> um, virtual reality is yes. uh is really getting appreciated a lot and be and yes i do often talk about like a vr headset and how amazing uh it must be for for instance for porn but what i've used my vr headset for recently is that i've also got a, a 360 cam like the gopro 360 that i sometimes put on my motorbike when i go riding <clears throat> so what i've done is I've uploaded one of my 360 cam videos to my YouTube page and with my VR headset, I can access that YouTube and I can be doing the same ride. And like, I'll, I'll, I'm on my bike, I can look down, I've got my handlebars there, 
I'm going down the road. I look to the right. I see people, you know, like I see our buddy Gino passing me on the bike. I look around, blue skies, you know, it's awesome. It's, it's, That's so dope. It is the closest thing to actually going out for a beautiful ride. Um, really? So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really, appre wow. really appreciate that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with the VR. I see our buddies who are triathletes and they're still training. They have their uh, stationary bikes or, or their bikes with them in the house and they'll have a laptop in front of them or a TV or a monitor, what have you. And then it's an app playing. Uh, so they choose a destination, you know, be it the French Alps or whatever. And then they're writing that course alongside other people at the same time. And, you know, your cadence is, I guess, the exact speed. And, and uh, so, yeah, as much as you push in, it's like a video game. You're going against everyone else. I just think that's fascinating that, you know, you can do this shared experience together um, with bikes. Yeah. I, I wonder it, what else you can do. Uh, spinning as well. Wow. Yeah. There's, it's, it's great that, um, yeah, that uh, this quarantine, um, I mean, it's terrible that it's happened, number one. Um, yeah. But uh, number two, that we're fortunate that it's happened in this time uh, when we have all of these, uh, all of this tech um, at our fingertips. And do you know what else is, um, is it's good that it's happening at this time? Uh, some really good, bad, and incredibly trashy reality shows that are streaming at the moment. Uh, so if you want to binge watch at like guilty pleasure type shows, then this is an awesome time to have access to the internet and a screen. Oh man, I really thought the, the reality show, the trashy reality show was done. You know, I thought we, we moved on from it. I still love reality TV shows. It's a wonderful uh, guilty pleasure. I eat it up. I get sucked in as you're supposed to, you know, and uh, they're great. I thought they were done until, yes, Too Hot to Handle came on on Netflix. And I was just like, no, you've brought us back 10 years again. You know, it's like, it's like, um, uh, what, what was that MTV show with the with the New Jersey boys and all that? Um, oh, oh gosh, God. Uh, what, oh, what, that was what horrid. Were they called? The, the uh, Jersey Shores. There you go. Yeah, oh, there you go. That, yeah. I think that was our lowest. We hit our lowest there. And then I feel like in a way we kind of came back, but yet with a bigger budget, you know, with, with Too Hot for It to Handle. I only saw a couple episodes. I couldn't stomach it anymore, but only because the people there reminded of me of me when I was younger. So I didn't want to watch it again. You finished it, sir. What <laughs> yes, is your uh, take on it? What is your take okay, on well, it? Okay, well, first, um, uh, someone is here is saying 90 Day Fiance. We'll get into that a little in a little bit. But yeah. um, Too Hot to Handle, I watched the first 10 minutes. And I was like, oh, God, you know, I can't watch this anymore. It's, it's like these people are just they're so shallow and they're terrible. Hey, maybe it, in an earlier time, you know, when I when I was younger, maybe I would have, you know, gotten more of a kick out of it. It's like, no, I can't watch it. But then I, we have some friends that are saying, no, no, keep watching. So I was like, all right, fine. I'll watch one episode. So I finished that episode Then I watched the next one and the next one. And then I just got hooked. The characters are just, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't write that shit. They are like so <laughs> shallow. So, you know, I just want to get laid at any cost whatsoever kind of thing. Um, there from around the world. Yeah, from around the world. Uh, mm -hmm. There's one character in there that reminds me so much of our good buddy Jeff in Australia. Yes. Like, and that guy is Aussie. Wow. Well, He is Aussie. He's and around he also, the age Jeff was yes. when we met Jeff. He's oh. got the same, you know, rock star, you know, uh, lovable larrikin, but a, a little bit of a dick <laughs> attitude. We need new uh, friends. And the originator of We Need New Friends. And the originator. If you've seen our tagline, guys, right here, Mark and Rove, We Need New Friends. And that's because of Jeff. <laughs> um, and if you, watch, uh, if you watch Too Hot to Handle, you will understand. But um, it's uh, it's it's nice to watch. They some of them some of them do grow. Uh, uh, there is character development, I guess, and it makes you wonder what you would do in this situation. Um, which I think is the same with any reality show. Every viewer watches a reality show thinking, "Oh wow, okay, I would do this in that situation." Oh, how could they? Or you know, "Oh, that's smart." Uh, I mean, whether it be this, whether it be the Amazing Race, or or, or anything. Uh, survivor. 
Um, so you find yourself uh, doing that as well and uh, realizing that you recognize some parts of your old self in that. Um, and yeah, maybe some of your new, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, some, um, a lot of, yeah, go. Yeah, no, I, well said, Mark. Well said. I, I don't know if I can stomach uh, finishing it, but I, I, I'll catch an episode or two if, if there's another extension. But I'm reading their comments, and a lot of them are pertaining to it gives your brain a chance to rest and turn off. Thank yeah. you, Dom's G. Uh, it allows you to take a mental break. It's nice to know we're smarter than them. Um, it makes us feel smart. So we and think. A 6-3 LA. Yeah, so we think. Uh, they're just edited that way. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, so – I agree with you guys um, out there in the audience. It's it's just wonderful to sit back and just decompress, turn off your smart button, and and just let it you know come at you. Um, and it's, I think it works now too too hot to handle because of the setting it's in as well. It's it's yeah, in a it's place a that we setting. all want to be. Yeah, we all want to be on the beach right now. So I mean, the timing is perfect. We all want to be in the beach and in a resort. Um, you know, we're not. For those, the majority of us who aren't keeping up with our fitness, I mean, to see hot bodies on there, you know, it's 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 inspiring for us as well. I never yeah. thought I would say that to a reality show, but you know, at that moment, it's yeah, I want to do that. I want to be there. I want to be like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Someone is saying, would you recommend uh, Cami? Uh, would you recommend to watch too much to, uh, too hot to handle? Yes, I would. Um, mm. Now, the other one that the one other big one that's uh, making uh, a lot of news is. 90 Day Fiance. I have not watched it. I've only seen one clip. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the one with Rose and Ed, is it? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm only as knowledgeable as you, too. I, I've seen fantastic memes and short clips of her. I'm pro-Rose. I feel so bad for her. I don't know. I, I hope she got... Why, why do you feel bad for her? Um, she, I don't know. It, I don't see the chemistry. I don't see the connection. Ed seems like he's in love, but it should be oh, yeah. two-way street, you know? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I caught a scene, Mark, uh, where they just finished having sex. I think it was their first time. So they're interviewing Ed, and Ed is, is uh, talking about the night. He's saying it was, you know, uh, we had some, we had some, we got into the room, and we had drinks, and then, um, uh, lights went off and then we got busy we made love we made love right and then they just showed uh the day after clips of them two on the bed you know a little bit of pillow talk and in the background in between them you clearly see an empty bottle of wine and one glass mm. so that just means somebody was trying to just get drunk just to make it through the night and i don't think it was ed <laughs> I'm not that much of a detective. I don't think it was Ed. <laughs> so there. That's why I feel bad for Rose, Mark. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the this, this, oh boy. Oh dear. I yeah. I'm. I am curious to watch it. Um. Uh. I see. Aria Herrera <laughs> said, "I saw that Rose down that shit down." <laughs> <laughs> I gotta sleep with it. <laughs> Two more bottles. <laughs> uh, oh, by is, that the way, why, uh, is that why you always keep bottles of wine near your bed, buddy? <laughs> it's me or her. One of us has to be drunk. Me or you. Come on, take it. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, well, I hate to. Uh, we did post something about um, why does Ed not have a neck? Sorry to bring the energy down, but. We just want to make sure p people uh, make sure the people know we weren't teasing or anything like that. We are curious, and I looked it up. Ed is suffering from Klippelfile syndrome, which is known as uh, KFS, and it's basically um, it's the disorder is it leaves patients having a short neck and very limited mobility, and that's what he's afflicted with, unfortunately. So there, we're not making fun of him, but it looks interesting. Yes. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so so what is your excuse uh, for having that <laughs> bottle of wine there? Oh wait, wait, what? <laughs> what is so what's your <laughs> excuse for having that bottle of wine there? Um, the uh, the other one that is that is trending that's doing really really well is uh, Love Is Blind. Now mm. I know that um, uh, a lot of people have been mentioning this. It's really popular. Basically, you get to know someone without seeing them. And then I think you've got to you've got to propose uh, just based on 
your conversations uh, and then you get to see them? I think it's something like that. Uh, do you think that, uh, would you, do you think you could legitimately propose to someone if you'd never seen them? Oh. You've talked, you've talked, you have the, you have a connection. There's that yes. like, emotional spark. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. There, there's been some, some phone calls. I mean, we're, we're of the era where, you know, you would talk on the phone for hours mm -hmm. with, with someone you're dating. And, um, you know, I, I just fell in love with just being on the phone and listening to her voice and, and just the stories and how it sounded like, uh, male emails, you know, I mean, um, we never got to see. Sorry, sorry. I, I thought of, I thought you were talking about who you were talking to when you said male. <laughs> Everybody's included. I send love to all. <laughs> no, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I, I could, I could, I could, I could uh, definitely fall in love. I don't know about proposing though. I don't know. How about you? Yeah. Uh, oof. I'd like to say, I'd like to say yes, but no, I, I, I could not propose based solely on a, connection that we have uh, verbally. Uh, I, uh, there's got to be some sort of physical attraction there as well. Um, mm. uh, I'm, I'm with too hot to handle, it was all physical attraction to start with. And then they, they yeah. you know, had to learn to get a deeper connection. Um, but I think you need to balance it out. It can't be all one or all the other. It really needs to you know, be a combination of the both. It doesn't have mm. to be like they're super hot, and then they've got like absolutely nothing uh, 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 to connect with on an emotional or uh, on a conversational level. And it can't be the other way around either. You've got to have a balance. One can be a little bit more than the other, but as long as you find the balance that you are happy with. Yeah, you got to give it to our forefathers though, the ones who were set up in arranged marriages. Oh I, I yeah, but that still Lolo's happens today. Does. Yes, it does, it does still happen today. Man, roll that talk about rolling the dice, you know. Um, yeah, you got to trust your parents to hook you up with a mate. I don't trust my parents to choose my outfit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> How much more with having them choose <laughs> my wife? <laughs> like, oh, she's good for you, she's good for you. <laughs> yes, I, I, I've got you the equivalent of, of orange bell bottoms in a wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'll take that. I'll take that over the doozies they they would have picked for me. No, but oh, yeah, no. I, I I love how uh, too hot to handle reverse engineered um, a Tinder hookup. <laughs> yeah, they went backwards. I, I yeah, love because that. they they talk they talk about um, uh, they talk about Tinder a lot on the show, or like you know that just that they're they're always you know hooking up with randoms here, there, and everywhere. So uh, yeah, it's. Maybe it's time that these dating shows were revisited to to teach the new generation um, that uh, it's more than just swiping right. Yeah. It, speaking of trashy uh, TV shows, I have to, they made a list for us. Our production team made a list for us. I just have to name them out if you don't mind, Mark. And uh, go go go. Uh, the, the titles are fantastic. I don't want to waste uh, what they research for us. But too hot to handle. Ninety day fiance. Love is blind, as you mentioned. The circle. I'm already scared with that. Love Island. Queer Eye, of course. Survivor. Dating around. Back with the ex. That looks interesting. Doctor Pimple Popper. The title alone. I know this type of show. I would totally watch this. Not before dinner. Oh. RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm sorry, but that is the most brilliant writing on TV. It really is. It's, I love RuPaul's Drag Race. It's so funny. The Chef Show, Ugly Delicious. Yeah, fantastic. Which ones do you guys like out there? Let us know your top three so, uh, so, uh, so, we, yeah, so we have an idea. Put them on our list. We, yeah, we haven't seen most of these. Um, yeah, for sure. But, for sure. but uh, speaking of reality shows, uh, we did have a poll. Uh, if you were in a reality dating show, which would you choose? Well, first of all, I'm going to ask you, Revelson, which would you choose? Would it be money or love? Oh. I got, at this moment right now, uh, yeah. it's, it's definitely money. <laughs> <laughs> and In fact, if you said money, food or love, food would have came in second. And then love. <laughs> oh. Sorry, Nelson. You, how about you, buddy? 
What would you love choose? Love or money? Love or money? You know what? It's I, I I hate I hate having to look for the to like explore the the loophole, but can you choose the money and then once the show is over, then go for the love with the one that you liked? You mean what your plan was in the Amazing Race? <laughs> Until yeah, I fucked did, it up. We, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we didn't win the money, damn it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> one out of two. Come on, we got one out of two. Yeah. Well, well, according to, yeah, according to that particular reality show, we chose the love. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah, guys. Let okay. us know what you would choose. Everyone's well, um um money. I see a lot of money. I see a lot of money. Okay. What yes. what does the poll, sir, say? It is eighty-two percent to eighteen percent. Back up a little, uh, money. sir. Back up. Oh, money wins. There you go. Money wins. Wow, that's a blowout. That's, eighty-two to eighteen. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, so? Uh I think. Hmm. Maybe think people think that uh, money is uh, is easier to find these days. I'm uh, sorry. Love is easier to find if you have money, which is not necessarily the case. Um, or they could just be thinking like me. It's like, okay, I'll take the money now, and then I will use the money to pursue the love with the one that I was interested in. Would um, would would you get the same results if you were to produce that show in different countries? Like, I think if you were to do that in LA, I think it would be 100% love, uh, money. If you were to do that in some place that's a little more spiritual, uh, like mm. uh, Bali or Burma, or you know, okay, this game show there. <laughs> Would they choose money or love? You know what I'm saying? I think maybe yeah. if you regionally or, or geographically, it would change. Possibly. What do you th how would the Philippines maybe it, do? Maybe it also depends on the amount of money. That's true, too. That is true, right? too. Yeah. The amount well, of money and your, maybe also your financial situation. If they say, hey, yeah. the prize is, you know, like uh, $10,000 and you're a millionaire, you're like, screw that. Give me the love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. how much I'll spend on the first date. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was a good one. And uh, uh, yeah, thank you guys for particip participating in that poll. I love these polls, man. They're fantastic. So oh, you'll, us, you'll, uh, be, you'll be pleased. You always know. Well, you'll be pleased to hear this particular little um, uh, poll number two, which was which reality show would you rather be on? Uh, the Amazing yes. Race or Too Hot to Handle? And both are hundred thousand dollar grand prize. That is absolutely correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, what do you? Who do you think the winner is? I'm gonna have to go with Amazing Race. I, I still think people would love to go on that show. It, it is a. Tr it lives up to, you know, all the stories are true. It's an amazing experience. How about? You? What about you? What's your now, take? And now it's funny you should mention that because I'm just looking at the comment of Zizzy Licious here. And she mm. says, reality shows are not real. I beg to differ. Some reality shows are very, very real, and The Amazing Race is definitely one of them. We can tell you that uh, from personal experience. There's no bullshit. There's, there's, yeah, it's all legit. What? Um, the Kardashians is not real? Oh, that's like being told the, the Easter Bunny doesn't exist. Oh. What? Easter Bunny exists. Come on, I'm, let's be oops, real. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Sorry, you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> All right. Well, you'd be pleased to hear that 97% chose Amazing Race over Too Hot to Handle. 97%. Yes, 97% Amazing Race, 3% Too Hot to Handle. So um, the 3% out there, you shallow pricks. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, maybe kidding. maybe they're maybe they're just talking about uh, they're just looking for love. Um, yes. Uh, oh, okay. Zizi Lish is uh, Aziz is saying I'm just talking about the ones with love, and um, mm. there's a few other people back here said that um, Cat Grace said can't trust no love anymore. That's such a fake buzzword. Oof, that sounds a little bitter, Cat. Um, Cami asked, "Love makes the world go round." Um, uh, Chelsea uh, Dolores always choose love. Um, uh, yeah, money not even a question. So yeah, we're, there, there's there's some people that don't believe that it is possible for uh, people to find love on a reality show. 
However, from Too Hot to Handle, apparently one of those couples is still together and are talking about getting married. Really? Okay. Yeah. Good to, uh, is it the black couple? Uh, if you haven't watched it, then I don't want to reveal who mm. it is. Okay. Sorry about that. Didn't, I yeah. should have said spoiler alert. Yeah. So spoiler alert. Okay. But, um, yeah, it was surprising to me when I did a little bit of extra research uh, afterwards. Mm. But uh, yeah, mm. good on them. It's Where did they shoot that at? Awesome. In, based uh, on your research, I don't, sir. Actually, I did not. I don't know. I didn't mm. uh, get okay. to that part of the research. Um, I want to guess Mexico, but that was my guess. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think I, there are some iguanas. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been Puerto Rico. I don't know. <laughs> we don't have iguanas here, so it's not in, it's not in, it's not in uh, Asia. No, it will definitely be Asia. Oh, and I am kind of bothered that there was not an Asian on that show. How dare they? Yes, that's true. That's how uh, dare they have people from all over the world, and Asians are a massive, massive race. Uh, that's not cool. That was not they, cool. It's actually I would the, have loved the, the to major- see an Asian in there. The majority of the world population is, is Asian. I mean, you, you take the biggest countries, you know, you've got China, you've got India, both Asian. Boom. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right? That was uh, cool. Yeah. So, oh, so apparently, yes, it was in Mexico. See, I was Ooh. right with the iguanas. <laughs> the iguana holding, wearing a sombrero and holding a Mexican flag. Yes, Mark. <laughs> yes, eating tacos. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, oh, speaking of which, Cinco de Mayo is coming up, everybody. So, uh, and it falls on an actual... Cinco de Mayo. I think it falls on the fifth, if I'm not um, mistaken. Uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, Cinco de Mayo always lands on Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> it is literally the fifth of May. <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry. I meant Tuesday. Oh, it falls on a Tuesday. <laughs> oh, God. oh, man. I'm sorry, when does 4th of July happen? You're the American. <laughs> I always get confused. I, it, that's usually on, also on a Tuesday, on Taco Tuesday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. Dear Mark, Lord. these brownies you cooked for me, what'd you put in them, buddy? <laughs> Whatever you gave me to put in them. You just didn't have an oven. <laughs> I gave you oregano. What are you talking about? Oh my goodness. I love it. I love it. Everybody, Taco Tuesday is Cinco de Mayo this year. I heard a rumor. It might be true. Get on it. Is that right? Cinco de Mayo also falls on Taco Tuesday. Yes, thank you. That's exactly what I was talking about. So, okay, I'm not good with flags or calendars. Leave me alone. Everything else, I'll nail. Okay. Uh, You read. Everything else you have nailed. Um, <laughs> speaking of nailing things, um, let's move on to our caption this. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be a great transition or not. and <laughs> But I'll take it. Let's go. So this is the, uh, the first picture. Um, I'm uh, covering the winning caption. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to caption this, then you can throw up some suggestions right now uh, in the comment section. Uh, but we did, in fact, have a winner for this caption this. All right. Um, so someone's commented here in the comments, that Ernestine Orozco, is this the devil's anus? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I, I... I'd like to see what it's movies funny. you've last watched on Netflix, Ernesti. <laughs> wow. It got dark in here, girl. <laughs> uh, I love someone it, said, use the, Oh, you, yeah, use the code. It's not a coaster, but thank you very much for thinking it's a coaster. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. Briggs. Okay, thank you, Briggs. Yeah. There it is. Uh, oh, it's Briggs. Okay. Yeah. Um, and thank you for providing the poster as well, Briggs. <laughs> yes. Uh, Tim- Chelsea Dolores. Temperature screening be like in the medieval era. Mm, oh, I like that one. I like that good. one. I like that's that one. That's good. That's very good. That's very good. Can you pin her or something? Chelsea Dolores, let, you're in the running for top three easily. That was good. Yeah, hold on. Let I, me. I, I, UP, UPIO says, I think my hair got stuck. Zaccheloni, this is where your love began. <laughs> 
This is where your love begins. Christina King, new coronavirus testing method for groceries. Oh, God. Oh, God. Um, these are great. These are great. I love it. I love our audience, man. They are, they are brilliant. They're, they're on it. They're Christina King, temperature mm, 38. <laughs> <laughs> and nutty. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> and they had peanuts for dinner. Um, uh, oh, our buddy Aaron, uh, death of glute What's... gluteus ponytails. Um, and Hates makes it, how far can we put it in? I'm not sure if that's referring to the quest, to the picture, or just her personal life. Um, <laughs> I just see but... two statues. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> Lockdown over be like. Laziest gardener, nice. <laughs> okay, well, let, let's show them the uh, let's show them the winning uh, caption from the ones that were sent in earlier. Yes, the ones and that were sent in. The winning caption is when she finally agrees to anal, then walks out of the bathroom with a strap on. <laughs> um, you know, you know what is especially concerning about this? <laughs> what is Mark? It was sent in by James Saw. Okay, James Saw. Saw same last name as your middle name. Yes, James Saw is my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, I I love the. Uh, you guys are such poets in your family, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I I just hope his grandmother isn't watching this. Actually, I know she will. <laughs> she probably gave the suggestion. That's the scary part. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh. Yeah, well, well done, James and Dolores. Well, well I done, believe. James. Yes, yeah, and uh, Chelsea Dolores with uh, temperature screening be like in the medieval era. Very, very, it. very impressive. That's some um, cool fiction writing. Should I be concerned that my 15 year old nephew is writing <laughs> comments like this? No, no, you should actually encourage it. The only thing you should be concerned with is he didn't use punctuation. There was no period at the end, not, no commas, but everything else was fantastic. Encourage you know, maybe that, there Mark. Were, maybe there was a period, which is why he was suggesting anal. anal. <laughs> That'll be the other caption, Mark. It's a, hey. it's a saw clean sweep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Love our okay. captions. <laughs> Time check, we're at uh, 9.49, FYI. And, uh, oh, what? Already? First one. I know, I know. You got to breeze through, buddy. Let's go. Okay. I... Okay, we're going to quickly uh, show you the next picture, which is that. I love that. All right? That I is an that. awesome photo. It's I really, really... I and, mean, and you know, what, is, what is that? This picture actually came from you. Yes. I, I love that picture because, number one... We, we're finally using a picture we own. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> we don't have to, there's no copyright infringement. No copyright infringement. Number two, uh, I, gosh, I, I, we were having an Inuman uh, somewhere and, you know, there was donuts and, and Cheetos together and we just thought, why not put Doritos and, or Cheetos and, on top of a Krispy Kreme donut and eat it because it's sweet and savory at the same time. Yes, we were drunk. Yes, it was delicious. So I snapped that pic. Those are my fr my uh, Spartan friends, uh, Will Devon and um, uh, Steve, Steve Near. Fantastic oh, guys. Yeah. Great, great guys. I love that picture. I love that picture. <laughs> oh, dear. So... <laughs> I want to hear we, your uh, comments, guys, on this one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll give we'll give them one minute uh, to uh, quickly yeah. stream out some uh, some comments on on once again on this picture right here. Yes, I'd love to hear from the EPX staff too. They've had a week with this picture, so I want to hear you guys, Christine and Ecat and Martin and uh, uh, Martin's wife. Oh my God, you have to participate too. The whole family, Briggs. Well, I, I'm going to uh, I'm going to read out our two runner-up comments okay. from uh, from uh, that were sent in earlier from Francis uh, S Francis G official. He says, one, two, three, say cheetos. <laughs> uh, oh, show uh, the, show it, show it, bro. You're not you're covering it up. No, no, this this is this is uh, that's a winning one. So I'm not showing that yet. Oh, okay, got it. Got it. Uh, 
uh, from ASDFGHK Lucas. Will Devor not? Okay. <laughs> not bad, not bad. I like, I like. And I can see in our comment section here, Zizzy Licious says, quarantine snacks. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, uh, Aaron Dito, when hunger strikes, you can have both. That's true. Yep. All right. And I think that we'll uh, mention our winner right now, which is doo -doo -doo, from actually the guy in the picture, Will Devon. And he has said, <laughs> what new coochie will taste like after the ECQ? <laughs> These are your friends, Ravelson. <laughs> I, and I need new friends. <laughs> <laughs> you do. I need a new nephew. <laughs> Oh, no. We need new nephews. We need new friends. We need new snack ideas. But <laughs> Apparently, we do. Oh, oh, we've got. Oh, we hey, we have a few. Uh, we have a few comments. Yes. Um, there we go. I want to read them. Go for it. Uh, let's see. One I like. I like Briggs exercise. I thought you said fries. Oh, <laughs> Martin de Guzman. Yeah. I'm not stoned. You're stoned. <laughs> <laughs> if I can add to Martin's, I, I, I wanted to put uh, put down, um, man, these edibles don't work. <laughs> I almost made you spit your water out, buddy. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Even more troubling because it's coffee. <laughs> Mark, your, your uh, swallowing technique is quite voracious, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I've been practicing. <laughs> oh dear! And thank you. That thank you. That was your Legarda tip of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Legard. Think... Legarda is a senator. <laughs> <laughs> Not only did I get the sponsor right <laughs> wrong, I insulted a senator. Oh great. Yeah. No more brownies for you, sir. <laughs> oh. We have lost the show. All right, we are nine fifty-four. Seven minutes to wrap up. Thank you. Okay. Well, we have. I think oh. we actually have four minutes to wrap because I started. Uh, yeah, that's right. Four or right. five minutes to four or yeah. five minutes to wrap. Um, yeah. Uh, with, it's nice to see that uh, everyone seems to be getting a kick out of this. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Just want to say thank you, everyone, for for joining us so far. We've only got a few minutes left. Time goes so quickly. Someone actually it does. Yeah, it uh, it. Someone was actually mentioning that. Yeah, it's super bit thin. Uh, we're sorry that it's only an hour. We we are so happy that you're enjoying it for as long as we are. Um, yeah. Uh, if uh, if we do eventually find figure out a way to make these longer, then we will. Hey, Dondi says hi. Hey, Dondi. Yeah, hi, Dondi. And Marion, good to see you. Marion, always, she's been there since day one, so thank you. And yes, I experimented with this water bottle. It's a little more quieter. You are correct. Yeah. Um, so but yeah, thank, we, we... Thank you, Mom, for making that suggestion. Yes. They, she gets uh, associate producer credit on this episode, for sure. Okay. You hear that, Mom? But, All right. yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it, if there's just a way to find uh, out if we can make this show longer without the cut in the middle, uh, you know, that abrupt cut, because we just don't want to lose that energy. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we're working on that, though. Trust me, we have our um, IT slash tech team working on a way to make this show longer, because we want to make it longer. We want to hang out with you. We want to read every single quote on there, because you guys are hilarious. So thank you. Oh, my thank God. You for the captions. Yeah. Uh, did yeah. you already announce the winner of that caption? Oh, yeah, you did. Well, uh, yes, I did. That's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to be posting it again to all the winners. So uh, we, we were so proud of, uh, you know, your your uh, submissions, and, and we post it on our social media site. So please follow them. Tell your friends to follow the Mark and Rove yes. uh, account because that's where we'll be uh, coming from. So, yeah, yeah we appreciate it. So, you. yeah. Yeah, the more, the more people we can get to follow this Mark and Rove account, then the better we can uh, step up uh the the production and everything we just want everyone to really enjoy this uh we're doing this for fun and we hope you guys are having fun as well um i know that uh there, there's a couple of people that are i guess listening for the first time chelsea dolores who had that great comment earlier uh says it was her first time to watch the ig live she had fun but leah madrid said next time i should check first a topic before putting your show on speakers beside my mom <laughs> I 
I hope she's a fan. <laughs> I hope she's a fan. We are fan. We are mom friendly. Moms love us. Titas love us. Ano ba? Yes. Come on, Leah. Come on. Oh, uh, this is thank yeah. You. This has been yeah. Awesome, uh, awesomely good time. Uh, we have one minute and fifty-five seconds remaining. Um, uh, what we want to know what you guys want us to talk about. We actually have. A bunch of topics that we've uh, got planned for the upcoming weeks, but we are always open to suggestions from you guys. We really, really enjoy uh, talking about stuff that you guys want us to talk about. Um, uh, we keep toying with the idea of uh, uh, mentioning the the Amazing Race a little bit and some behind the scenes. We might do that in a future episode. Um, we've got some more slightly ECQ stuff coming up. We've got uh, special days and weeks coming up. So we'll try and maybe gear a topic around those. Um, uh, oh, Briggs out there, fun. Brought to you by Lagarde. <laughs> oh, Leah said she enjoyed it though. I promise. I promise. Oh yes, you're right, Ro. Moms do like us. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I see Yael. I see your quote, and I don't want to mention it because Mom is still listening on the speakers. But we see you, Yael. <laughs> oh God, you see his comment. <laughs> oh my God! Yes, I did. I, I'm not sure what to make of it. <laughs> uh, love that him. and I love fear. Him. <laughs> uh, um, oh, so Chelsea Dolores is saying, "Ang pinaka weirdest, funniest things people did during ECQ." That's a great idea. Uh, production team, please take note. Uh, maybe we can talk about uh, some of the weirdest and funniest things people did do during ECQ. Yep. Um, uh, what will happen to premium motorcycle lifestyle in times like this? The topic can be discussed. True. Oh yeah. Um, well, yeah. Like like I said, I just I just pretend that I'm riding my motorbike using VR. Uh, but uh, I think speaking of funny things to do during ECQ, I think this is definitely one of them. So we got to say goodbye. We've got five seconds. Row, say say bye. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe.